Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video and welcome to the lesson number five of the series of tutorial on how to build a WordPress plugin from scratch. Welcome again. In this tutorial, we're gonna see how to use the uninstall hook that automatically WordPress applies to whatever plugin. In the previous lessons, we saw how to properly use the activation and deactivation hook. And of course, WordPress offers also a uninstall hook that is triggered only when the plugin is deactivated and the user clicks delete. I'm not gonna click delete now because I don't wanna lose everything, but we're gonna test it in future lessons. So you probably already guessed how to use the uninstall hook and how it's gonna get written. Basically, it's identical to the activation and deactivation hook, but instead of being registered, the activation hook is simply register uninstall hook, and that's pretty standard. Also here in this case, we can specify the actual method inside our class that it's uninstall. But if we save this and we check in our backend, even uh, just by activating the plugin, we're gonna have a PHP error. And the PHP error is that only a static class method or function can be used by an uninstall hook. This is a limitation of the uninstall hook that I always find annoying, especially when I'm in an object-oriented programming situation. You can solve this by declaring uh, these static method, but if you're not comfortable with object-oriented programming, it could be kind of like way over your head. So I'm not gonna use this method, but I'm gonna use a better method that I consider personally like easier to understand and easier to manage. So instead of having a uninstall hook here, and instead of having a uninstall method here, what I want or what we can do, automatically WordPress gives us the ability to create a unique PHP file that gets triggered when the user uninstall our plugin. And this file has to be inside our plugin folder, of course, and has to be called uninstall.php. Pretty straightforward, right? So inside the uninstall.php, we're gonna first open the PHP tags and not closing them as usual. And then here we can specify just a simple comment. If you want, just simply trigger this file on plugin uninstall, something like that. If you want, you can repeat the package of your plugin that in my case should be alicad dash plugin if I'm not wrong, I don't remember. Let's go back up. Uh, text domain package, oh, alicad plugin, like the class, okay, let's save it. Okay, perfect. So here, first and foremost, before writing anything inside this file, we need to do a security check because we don't wanna accidentally give the user the ability to trigger this file if is not actually triggered by WordPress itself during the uninstall, like during the disinstallation of our plugin. In order to check and uh, trigger this uninstall.php in the proper way, we need to do a simple condition very similar to the condition that we're using in our main file. And we can say that if is not defined a global variable that WordPress passes to this file and this global variable is wp underscore uninstall plugin. If this global variable generated by WordPress is not defined, that means that someone is trying to access the uninstall.php not via WordPress, not in a proper way. So we can, as usual, die like we always do. Just destroy the execution, don't continue, don't do anything. So Always remember, if you decide to use the uninstall.php, always, always use this uh, security check. Otherwise, people could, users, other developers, or accidentally another plugin, if it's malicious or something, could check if a uninstall.php can be triggered, and that something really bad could happen. Because usually the uninstall.php is used just for one very, very important thing. And that's it, to clear database stored 
data. So in our case, because in our plugin activation, we created a custom post type on the activation, this custom post type is not going to exist anymore. But if the user wrote some books or something, a custom post type, or if like in the future lesson, we're going to see on activation or generically our plugin generates some custom administration options and all those options uh, are uh, updated by um, a user, so saves some uh, custom data or some custom checkboxes, radio buttons, or stuff like that. We need to clear the database from the data if the user decides to delete our plugin. If he deletes the plugin, that means he doesn't care about the data connected to the plugin. So we need to clear the database. We cannot uh, just ignore these and leave the plugin just bloating the database of the user, even if the user is not using our plugin anymore. So in order to do that, we need to use uh, some uh, database related methods that are really tricky and really sketchy because you're actually opening the database and deleting stuff, um, injecting SQL or just like triggering SQL commands. And if a user or a mal malicious developer gains access to the unistyle.php, he could uh, destroy the database of the user without us knowing it and that's basically all our fault so let's not do that so now that we have this what we want to do we want to delete what's stored inside our database in our case the book custom post type because our plugin is generating a custom post type called book the user is saving some books so when it deletes the database just delete everything related to this unique custom post type to do that we could use or a built-in method of wordpress or a sql query and we're gonna see both methods so first we're gonna create a variable called books and inside here, we're gonna just get all the posts. So we're gonna use just the get posts variable. We don't need a WP query because we don't need to print the post or do a post loop. We just need to gather all the post data inside a variable. So let's use get posts. And here we need to pass a bunch of arguments. The first and most important is the post type. So our post type that we wanna gather, of course, it's book and remember the name has to be identical to the register post type unique slug that you decided for your custom post type then we can specify number posts and we can say minus one when saying minus one we're gonna basically gather all the posts all together so now that we have all our custom post types or all the posts related to the custom post types inside this variable we can simply use a for each loop of PHP by saying for each books has book. And if you don't know, if you never use the for each loop in uh, PHP, basically, if you have an array of arguments, the for each is gonna loop through every single argument. It's gonna store the single argument it's currently looping into inside a custom variable that we generated here. So here we could also call this variable value or um, data, whatever. You can call this variable whatever you want. Because I have a variable, an array called books, I wanna store the single value inside a book variable. That makes more sense. But basically for each books that we have in our get posts method, we're gonna trigger the built-in method of WordPress WP delete posts. And the WP delete post accepts two parameters. The first is the post ID. In order to access the post ID, we need to call the book, that is the current post that we're looking at. And with the arrow, we need to access the ID because the book is an object. And the second parameter is a Boolean and stands for the force delete. So if we save it to false, basically we're saying to WordPress to not delete this post ID if this post ID is already in the trash. If it's in the trash, just leave it like that. Instead, if we say through, just delete this. It doesn't matter if the post is in draft, is in trash, is private, so it's not public. Basically, we through, we are saying delete all the posts no matter what's the status, what's the current status of the post, and that's what we wanted. So this is the first method, pretty straightforward. We have books, we grab them with a get post, and then we loop through each post, and then we just use a built-in method of WordPress. This is good if we have uh, just this scenario, if you have uh, one custom post type or a custom taxonomy and you need to delete all the data related to the custom taxonomy. But 
if we uh, have multiple options or we know that our custom post type was bounded with custom meta boxes or custom taxonomies or custom options and we want to delete everything at once without grabbing the post and looping the post, we can use the almighty WPDB. And to use the WPDB, we need to call it before. So let's call the global variable of WordPress $WPDB. And these WPDB is really powerful and really dangerous. So be careful when you use it because these will give you the ability to trigger an SQL query directly inside the database. So access the database via SQL. If you don't know anything about SQL or SQL, I don't know however you want to pronounce it, SQL is the language that you use to interact with the database and uh, you can do everything with it. You can uh, delete a table, delete the entire database, delete one single value, loop dynamically inside all the values and detect just one ID and delete that. So. If you don't know anything about SQL, don't use this method because it's really sketchy. You could delete everything. If you feel more comfortable with SQL, you don't want to use the for each. Let's use SQL and let's see how to use it. In order to trigger an SQL command, you need to, of course, call the global variable like we did here. And then this is an object. So the WPDB object, we need to access the query method inside this object or inside this class, I guess. Class is more accurate to call this a class instead of an object. And the query needs to be triggered with double quotes. Always use double quotes, it's better. And the query that we're going to use is a pretty standard SQL query. So we're going to say delete from the table that WordPress uses to store our post and the table is WP under, oh, underscore posts where the column post type and if you don't know what I'm talking about these inside your database you should have a column called post type inside your WP posts where the post type is equal to single quotes the name of our post type book and we can double check by saying hey the post type yes post type is book okay let's delete this that's it basically we one single uh, sql query we're doing the same thing that we were doing here by grabbing all the custom post type and deleting all the custom post type by doing a for each loop this is more um, uh, disruptive this is more direct it's faster but it's also more dangerous Something else that we could do if we have post types that are, uh, they were using custom meta options or custom taxonomy, we can still use the WP query and trigger another query to delete everything that is not related to a post that we currently have. So let's do again WPDB, let's access the query method. And inside here, say we double quote, delete from the WP post meta and the WP post meta is the database table of WordPress where WordPress stores all the meta boxes related to post type, custom post type, a page, an administration error, whatever. We can say that delete all the post meta where the post ID is not in. And here we can open and close the single brackets and we can do another SQL uh, query to check and grab all the posts that we have inside our list of posts. So let's select the ID from WP underscore posts. That is the, oh, sorry, all lowercase posts. That is the same table here. So what are we doing here? What are we doing here is basically we are uh, selecting the, not if, but ID, sorry, that's a typo. We're selecting all the IDs from the WP posts that currently, because this query comes after the first one, all these posts are not books anymore. Like we deleted all the posts with the post type books. So we're gonna have just IDs from posts there are not part of our custom post type. And we're gonna say, based on these IDs, delete all the WP post metadata that don't match 
this ID because the WP post meta it's connected to the WP post via the post ID. So we're saying if the post ID doesn't match one of these IDs, delete everything because that means that this post meta it's related to a post that doesn't exist anymore. So we are clearing the database. Another thing that we could do, we could do exactly the same, but instead of using the post meta or instead of checking inside the post meta, we can use the WP term underscore relationships that is another database table term relationships that matches uh, the term taxonomy with the object ID uh, that it's basically the um, post ID. So here we can say where the object ID is not into the list of posts that we currently have. So these are basically the, the basic thing that you should do if you decide to uh, delete the custom post type when you have a generated custom post type. But as I said, these two methods work exactly the same and you could do exactly the same by getting the taxonomies and all with your, all your custom taxonomies or if you know the ID is a unique identifier of your post meta, you can get those post meta and with a for each loop, delete them all. You can do in both ways. So it's pretty much it for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And if you want, you can spend a couple of minutes on the support me page of my website where you can find all different ways and methods to support me, support my channel and help me to do better videos and better tutorials for you. Thank you again, guys. And until the next lesson, as usual, happy coding.